if you actually tried that example of the sponge with the straw, I'm sure one of the things that you did was once you stuck the straw in and tried sucking and it stopped, um, you removed the straw and moved it into different parts of the sponge, trying to get oil from those different areas of the sponge. And that's one thing that we've just managed to do with directional drilling um, in oil wells. It used to be that an oil well would just drill down and then the entire oil well would have to be moved to drill a new spot. Now with directional drilling, we can drill multiple wells and drill horizontally through a well to try and improve the amount of oil we can get out. So advantages of oil. Um, one of the big advantages of oil is um, it's very easy to move from place to place. Uh, oil tankers and pipelines can move oil easily from one area of the country to another area of the country or from one country to a different country. We have pipelines going from Alaska running all the way down to the United States. It's easily transported, much easier than coal. Second benefit is it uses much less land than coal. There's not this disperse, uh, this overburden, this movement of soil and rock from one place to another. Um, so it uses much less land mass than coal does. Second ben uh, sorry, third benefit is that um, oil is fantastically useful. Think about everything in your everyday life. So if you're sitting there and using the computer, the outside of the computer is made from plastic, well that's made from oil. The cables that are running to your computer, the power cable, uh, if you've got any um, internet connection cables, their outside is a plastic cover, all made from oil. If you look at the paint on the wall right next to you, that paint's made from oil. You're probably sitting in a house with some blinds, those blinds are probably plastic and made from oil. You've got uh, a ceiling above you, it might be a popcorn type ceiling made from oil. You've probably got um, lamps around you and the insert to those lamps and lights is all made from oil. Probably the soles of your shoes are made from oil. Um, um, there's definitely some part of your clothing is made from oil, whether that be your belt or whether it actually be a polyester shirt. As you look around, your life runs on oil. <coughs> the, the handles on your uh, saucepans are oil. The handle on the outside of your microwave oven is oil. Your TV is made from a bunch of plastic material that's made from oil. A bunch of our medicines are made from oil. Fertilizers can to be made from oil. Pesticides get made from oil. Drugs are made from oil. Oil is pervasive in all areas of our life. The tires on our car are made from oil. The lubricant in your car is oil. The power source that pushes your car along is oil. Oil is vital for our economy right now. And because it is so vital, the technology is really well developed. We know exactly how to split oil, how to fracture it, how to refine it, how to make it into new things. So again, this is a well-known technology. There's no doubt that oil will run our economy. That's what our economy runs on. It's the number one fuel source that we have at the moment. So what's the downsides? Let's start with the easy ones and then we'll end with the biggest downside. So, why is it bad? Um, we know it produces CO2 when burnt. When you burn gasoline or any other types of oil, carbon dioxide is produced. And that CO2 um, appears to be changing the temperature of the planet. When it's burnt, it also produces other air pollutants. It produces NOx. Uh, NOx is uh, acid gas. It produces acid rain. When you burn it, um, it also produces other particular pollution, small particles that lead to lung damage. It can lead to water pollution. Oil spills happen, um, particularly lately with the oil spill in the Gulf, and then uh, followed by two oil spills in Alaska and an oil spill out near Yellowstone. Um, water pollution is keen on everybody's mind how easy it is to spill small amounts of oil and just destroy large amounts of water. 
Next problem with it, um, large government subsidies. Uh, oil is so important to our economy that the government provides tax breaks and subsidies for um, oil development on all suppliers. Now, this is a hidden cost in oil. You, know, you don't pay it when you go to the pump because it comes from your tax dollars. And uh, we do live in a capitalist society and there are some people that would say let's make all costs up front let's pay them when you use the resource if you could get rid of the government subsidies then we would be paying um, for the oil as it actually costs to deliver it at true market value and then oil would have to compete um, with all other energy sources to see if it was better. So we could remove energy subsidies for coal, for oil, for nuclear power, for wind power, for solar power, and see the true cost that a company has to have to actually supply our energy needs and make decisions based on that, rather than on um, a cost that is somewhat overridden by the government, somewhat hidden by the government. Now remember that it is uh, a non-renewable fuel source, so oil will run out um, at some point. So when we're looking at when oil will run out, uh, it appears that we've already reached peak oil. Peak oil is the time when we've extracted uh, the same amount of oil that is left in the earth. So we suck out, say, 5 million gallons, and there's 5 million gallons less left. So we've sucked out 5 million gallons, there's 5 million gallons left, that's peak oil. That's the most we could have ever got, and from now on, there's just less and less oil each year. Um, it appears we've, heat, we've reached peak oil. So that means that in years to come, there will be less and less and less oil each year. And because of supply and demand, um, it means that the cost of oil goes up all the time. None of those are the number one disadvantage for the oil. They, uh, they are disadvantages, but uh, we know that all of our uh, conventional uh, non-renewable fuels are going to run out. We know that. Uh, all of the fuels get government subsidies, we know that. All of the fuels have some environmental impact, we know that. So what actually is the number one problem with using oil for our economy? Number one problem is where are all of the oil reserves? And from our, our little graph here, you can see that uh, very little of the world's oil is actually found within the United States which means that our energy source uh, has to be imported. The US is a net importer of oil. Uh, it does not produce enough oil within its own borders, nor can it produce its own uh, energy supplies from within its borders using oil. There's just physically not enough oil in the ground in the United States to supply our energy needs. So we have to import oil from other nations those nations tend to be less than friendly to the United States. Venezuela has a president who calls the United States um, the great Satan. So many of these nations have no internal desire to help the United States. Instead, their often stated desire is to harm or see the downfall of the United States. And these are the very people uh, that we are dependent on for our energy sources. What is without a doubt though is that foreign suppliers uh, provide oil to the United States and therefore oil supplies are a very large problem for our national security. If a foreign nation decided to increase the price of oil uh, they would have dramatic effects on our economy. If foreign nations stop the flow of oil, it would have dramatic effects on our economy. So the stability of our economy and of our energy supply is not our own. It depends on other nations. So oil has problems for national security. We have to maintain our flow of oil um, or our economy will go down. 
and all of you have lived uh, through a time when uh, gas prices tend to swing wildly. Um, prices go up, prices go down, prices change during the same day. It is a very unstable market. But probably prior to your birth, um, the market was even more unstable. Uh, twice during the US's history, OPEC, OPEC stands for the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, these are the cartel that actually set the price of oil for the world and they do not include the United States. Uh, OPEC has just raised the price of oil and caused the US economy um, to be extremely stressed. Uh, when they did this during the 70s um, there were extremely long lines for gas stations. One of the local gas stations had a four mile line to get in there to try and get gas because gasoline was so um, rarely delivered due to the oil crisis period. Now the same thing could happen uh, at any point. Um, our economy is not stable when we have to rely on other nations for our energy supply. So that's going to be our number one problem for using oil as your primary energy source. Now you need to know there's no way you can get away from oil. You can't get away from oil completely because we have to have oil products, we have to have our plastics and all everything else. Um, but what we can do is not rely for energy supply on oils. So what are our major issues here? We've got that um, there's a lot less oil than coal so it will run out beforehand. We've got that it definitely has problems in terms of pollution like in the Gulf oil spill and we've got that there definitely are problems with national security in terms of using oil. And even though it does have some problems such as um, oil spills damaging wildlife it also has some benefits. It is an extremely useful energy source that's why we all use oil products diesel and gasoline to drive our vehicles with. It's easy to transport and it can be used for multiple, multiple things. Our last non-renewable resource is conventional natural gas. Now natural gas um, is mostly methane or methane. I, I'd pronounce it methane, you can pronounce it me methane, doesn't really matter. CH4. And natural gas has a number of advantages. First off, there's large amounts of natural gas. And in fact, with new technology um, fracking, the, the availability of natural gas has just dramatically increased. So there's probably more natural gas than any of the other resources available right at the moment. Uh, not only that, large amounts of these uh, resources are found right here in North America. So gas, um, literally during the last year, has jumped in its ability to provide energy to the nation. Natural gas also has an extremely high energy yield and is much less polluting than any other fossil fuel. Now it's CH4 so it's got carbon in it, it's got hydrogen in it and it doesn't have the other stuff so when you burn it you don't get any methane production. You don't get, as long as you burn it efficiently, any acid gases from it that produce acid rain. You, as long as you produce it, burn it efficiently, you don't get particulate pollution. Now, the key there is you have to burn it efficiently. As long as you have modern, efficient burning of the gas, it is the cleanest fossil fuel available. Now, it does produce CO2 um, because we've got carbon there, but it produces less CO2 per unit energy than any other fossil fuel. Natural gas is also easily transported. Um, we have gas pipelines running through most cities, running right to your house, so we know that we can transport it fairly easily. And just like oil, it has a low land use. Downsides to natural gas um, have to do with this idea of fracking. Fracking is a way of splitting the ground using high water pressures to get gas out of the ground. 
And if you do a, a, a YouTube search for problems with fracking with natural gas, you'll see a guy who can light his tap water on fire. They're pumping water into these wells, um, splitting the rock to get the gas out, and that water's got to go somewhere. And if it goes in the water table, it carries with it um, some of the gas. So you, your water will have some natural gas in it, and when it comes through the tap and that gas bubbles out, you can set fire to it. So obviously there are some pollution problems. Um, definitely a problem with our technology at the moment that could be improved with improved collection techniques. It also has a disadvantage that it is non-renewable. At some point natural gas will run out. That's a long term down the road, but uh, we cannot just go, oh yeah, conventional natural gas is what we're going to use and leave it there. Um, at some point it is non-renewable, it will run out. You have to still move towards renewable sources. Next problem is gas leaks. Obviously um, we always have gas leaks and when the methane is released um, that is in itself a greenhouse gas, a gas that causes an increase in the temperature of the planet. So it's not just burning it and producing CO2 but we also produce a separate gas methane that also increases the temperature of the planet and methane is much more warming than carbon dioxide is. So we've got some benefits. Um, there's large amounts and this graph is definitely out of date now uh, because we've found some large usable uh, natural gas reserves within North America. The amount of gas on the planet has just recently gone up with new technologies for extracting it. It's the cleanest of all of the fossil fuels and it does also have some downsides. Um, eventually it will run out. It does produce global warming and extraction does have an impact on the environment. 